Section 4.4, oxidation reduction reactions. You can also call an oxidation reduction a redox reaction, and it involves the transfer of electrons between reactants. So if you steal an electron, that is going to be called a cation. And you end up with a positive charge if you steal. Okay, so it's lost of an electron. If you steal an electron and take it upon yourself, then you become an anion, and you would be negative, and it's a gain of an electron. Now, if I, if I steal from you and make you positive, okay, that is called oxidation. So if I turn you into a cation, you were a metal, and I turned you into a cation by stealing an electron from you, I've oxidized you. So an oxidation is when you turn something into an ion rather than it was originally a metal. And the same way would happen with an anion. If you become an anion, you become more negative. That is called reduction. And that kind of makes sense. Your charge is reduced. So it's reduction when you become less of a charge. So you were, say, uh, chlorine was neg or, uh, neutral, so just regular chlorine. And chlorine steals an electron in order to become like group 8. And when that happens, it is reduced. All right. So oxidation is becoming positive, uh, making something positive. Reduction is making something negative. So oxidation reduction, along with acid bases, are the two big, big, big um, groups of reactions in, in, the, in nature. So here's three pictures. B is, I guess, I uh, hope it's not a boat. I think it's a dock. And you can see that it was made out of uh, steel, which is iron, and it has been oxidized. So if it's oxidized, it means the metal that used to be there turned into solution turned into an ion that dissolved, because ions dissolve in water, and dissolved into the water and washed away. And eventually you had a hole in the boat. Okay, bad news. The, the C is tarnish. Tarnish is silver, a silver oxide. So the iron is an iron oxide, that's called rust. The silver is silver oxide, called tarnish. And then the A is a copper oxide, and it's called a patina. And so, like, the Statue of Liberty used to be the color of a penny. It, it took 25 years for it to oxidize when it was put up in the 1880s. It was already into the 1900s before it started uh, completely turning green, until it completely turned to, a, to that pale copper green. So, a cation is, a, is an ion, so it dissolves in the water. An anion dissolves into the water. Um, but let's say that you have a, if you have, let's say you have a cation. Let's say that I have a positive uh, cation. Let's say I have sodium. And I reduce it. Okay, so I already have the, the anion. I already have the cation. I reduce it, which means the charge goes down from positive to, back down to neutral. I've turned it from an ion back into a metal. That's reduction. So if you dig up some ore, iron ore, copper ore, anything that has ore in it, um, that most of those, most of the ores that you would dig up in the ground don't have the metal just sitting there like gold would, because they are in some kind of a uh, an ion. It's like something oxide or something. So you're going to have to reduce it into metal. You would have to reduce it back into the metal and then use the metal that way. So an oxidation reduction is a loss or gain of electrons. So I learned it this way, oil rig, okay? So ox, um, oxidation is loss, okay? Reduction is gain. 
oxidation is loss, reduction is gain, and then when you have a reaction that's stealing electrons from each other, it's called a redox reaction. So here's a, a great example. You've got an, an acid, HCl, you've got magnesium metal, and what will happen if you look closely, the, ma the metal is going to start um, losing electrons. And as it's losing electrons, it becomes more positive. Well, that positive is an ion, and it's now soluble in the water, in the solution. So the magnesium comes off and into solution, so you have those gray dots now in the solution. The magnesium is starting to eat away. Eventually, it'll completely go away. It'll break completely apart. And in the meantime, what is stealing those electrons are your, H, uh, your hydrogens. Your hydrogens then come together as hydrogen gas and bubble off. So when you put a metal, a group 1 or group 2 metal, in an acid, you usually get bubbles. And those bubbles are hydrogen that were in the water, the H, the H is from the water. So in order to know whether you've been oxidized or reduced, you need to know whether you're going up or whether you're going down. So to do that, we start with an assignment of an oxidation number, and then you do it at the end in oxidation number again, and when you, then you look at the two, whatever the, that are the same on both sides, the same material, and look, has it gone up in charge or down in charge? And then you know whether electrons have been stolen or electrons have not. So here's an, here's an example. We have the magnesium that we saw go into the hydrochloric acid. That's the red. The hydrochloric acid is the HCl. So we need to assign oxidation numbers. So the first rule of oxidation numbers, and I'd really like you to write this down, is elemental form. Anything in an elemental form, such as hydrogen gas, that's in its element, or magnesium solid, that's an element, is going to have an oxidation number of zero. Anything in its in elemental form has an oxidation number of zero. So that's the first, the, the first rule. Um, also, if you ever to where it have a charge, let's say you have an ion, let's say you have this, Cl minus 1, it's going to have a charge of minus 1. Because whatever ion that you have is going to have the same oxidation number as the ion it is. So if you were to have, say, Na positive, that would be positive 1. It would be, it would be the same as its charge. So elemental form, okay, ions, same as charge. There's your second rule. Um, Nonmetals normally are negative. Anything to the right is going to steal electrons. Anything to the left is going to give them away. So left ones become oxidized. Right ones become um, reduced. There are some uh, exceptions to that, but for the most part, most of these you're not going to know. Uh, you're just going to have to guess. But there's a few that you can know. Fluorine is always going to be negative 1. Oxygen almost always is going to be negative 2. So if you take those, then you can't, and let's do one more, hydrogen is going to be positive 1. If you can go from there, you can almost figure out every single uh, molecule. So let's do the HCl. If hydrogen is positive 1, then, and they're balanced, see there's no charge there, it's not HCl minus or anything, it's, it's neutral, that means Cl has to balance with, neg with positive 1, and it'll be negative 1. Okay, Magnesium um, has to balance on the other side with 2. Now, we already saw that the chlorine was negative 1. Uh, chlorine is negative 1. A lot, of, a lot of times, group 7 will be negative 1. You can almost guess it. Group 7 is negative 1. So if this is negative 1, and I've got 2 of them, that means it's negative 2. And magnesium has to balance a negative 2, so this will be positive 2. And then the hydrogen is 0 since it's an elemental form. So what's, what went up? This went from 0 to positive 2. So magnesium went up. It was oxidized. The hydrogen went down from positive 1 to 0, so it was, the hydrogen was reduced. So what happened? 
the hydrogen stole an electron from the magnesium. When you write it out like this, it's really hard to tell. It looks like I don't see an electron, I don't see anything. All you know is that I've got this plus this equals something else. You have to say, okay, what are the oxidation numbers? Assign them. Once you assign them, which one went up? That's oxidized. Which went down? That's reduced. The next type of reaction is called a displacement. And a displacement is when, when an ion steals an electron from a metal. So if I were to write this up and say A plus some kind of a compound where B is the positive and C is the minus, then what will happen is A is going to kick out the B and you'll end up with B plus AC. So it's like it's like stealing someone's girlfriend, okay? Whoever, whoever she prefers will, the old one can hit the road. So the A, it would be more reactive than B, and so it, the C will join with the A and the B is kicked out. So this is displacing something, displacing an ion. So an ion is stealing the electron, ion is becoming reduced, the, the, the metal is becoming oxidized, it then is an ion and it joins in with the other ion. So in this case, A becomes an ion and, and joins it makes AC, and the B, which is an ion, grabs that electron, becomes a metal, and then is kicked out by itself. So one steals the other, essentially. So the activity series is essentially a cheat sheet. It's a list of all of the metals and which ones are easier to get stolen from. Okay, so it's like a list of seventh graders that you can shove in the locker. Which ones are more likely to be shoved in the locker? They're at the top of the list. So the ones who can shove the other ones in a locker are lower in the list, and then the big bully is at the bottom. So if you, for instance, potassium can oxidize lithium. That means potassium can steal the electron from lithium and then become an ion. Barium can steal that electron from potassium or anything below. So in the case of, say, hydrogen, it's outlined in blue, Hydrogen, anything above hydrogen can turn hydrogen into hydrogen gas and it will bubble out. Remember, you could put a metal in to HCl and turn that hydrogen into hydrogen gas and have it bubble? Well, anything above it, you can put it in, in uh, hydrochloric acid and it'll turn it into hydrogen. Anything below it, so if you put copper in HCl, it wouldn't do anything. It would just clean the copper a little bit. Silver, put a silver dollar in some in some acid, nothing would happen. Gold, platinum. These these um, coinage metals are coinage metals for a reason. Normally they don't tarnish very much. They don't like gold doesn't tarnish. Platinum doesn't tarnish at all uh, because it doesn't oxidize with anything. So that doesn't it doesn't turn into ions.